Do you, the veteran, know if VA employees make mistakes or commit errors when adjudicating your claim? Do you know what these errors are called? Do you know how they are often identified? Do you know how they are less likely to be identified? In today's video, I'm going to answer all those questions for you. And towards the end of this video, I'm going to give you a bonus that I think you'll like. So make sure you stick around. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dwayne Kimball, owner and founder of KMD89 VA Claims Consulting, United States Army veteran and retired VA rating specialist. Today's video, do VA employees commit errors when adjudicating your claim? What are those errors are called? How are they often identified? Some examples of some of these errors? And when are they less likely to be identified? Okay. Make sure you stick around. I got a huge bonus for you, or maybe not a huge bonus, but a bonus that I think you'll find very interesting, okay? So, do VA employees commit errors? Yes, they are human, okay? I think a lot of times, veterans, they say, hey, this, must, this has to be a perfect system. It is not. Just like any other huge organization with hundreds and hundreds, or even, in this case, thousands of employees, VA employees are human. Definitely keep that in mind, okay? They do commit errors. I don't think there's VA employees out there that just go, go to work every day and just say, oh, I'm going to see how many errors that I can commit today. They don't want to do that because they'll end up getting fired, okay? And you have to remember, in previous videos, I talked about VA employees on quotas, production quotas. They have to do so much work in a two-week period, and guess what? Not only are they on a production quota, they're on a quality standard, uh, I guess, quota, if you will. Okay. When I was a rating specialist, that quality standard was 98%. You get one error, you're definitely dropping below that 98%. And it could take months to get you back above that 98%. And they could maybe fire you in some cases if, you, you know, if that's a trend. Or they may say, okay, you can't work on overtime. You can't work on any special projects. You can't get promoted. So definitely there was some added stress there when you got an error or multiple errors, okay? Because they didn't give you time to go back and correct it. You had to go back and correct it, but they didn't really give you time to do it, all right? But what are these errors called? They are called clear and unmistakable errors, okay? I did a video explaining what a CUE is, and I'll link that video to the end of this video, okay? So you could definitely go back and watch it if you have it, all right? Now, how are they sometimes found, okay? Years ago, when uh, claims were paper files, a raider sometimes would catch their own error. I did it, okay? Maybe another raider would come behind that raider, a previous raider that did that previous raiding decision and see an error, okay? But every regional office has a quality department. And in that quality department, uh, they have individuals there that will pull five ratings a month for each rating specialist. Sometimes they catch it. Now, I've had that happen to me several occasions over my many years at the VA. And you get an error call. Sometimes I looked at it and I was like, hey, wait a minute. This is not an error. You rebut it and they overturn it. But if you rebut it and you lose that rebuttal, then the CUE is upheld. Now, sometimes it could go in the favor of the veteran or sometimes it couldn't be. I've seen instances where uh, raiders granted something and they got that rating decision pulled. Just so happened that particular rating decision pulled for quality review and the VA says, hey, you shouldn't have granted that benefit. You got to go back and sever. And I've seen it happen in reverse where a veteran denied something, not, no, not a veteran, but uh, RVSR denied something, got their rating decision pulled by the quality department. They said, hey, you committed an error. You denied that. You shouldn't have denied it per 38 CFR or a particular court case. You should have granted it, okay? So it doesn't always mean it's negative for the veteran, all right? I've seen it go uh, both ways. Now, also, 
during the old days. VSOs, veteran service officers, they would come up and periodically throughout the day and see if Raiders had completed any rating decisions for veterans that they represented. Okay, they would sit there at a table, go through it. Oh, yep, I see an error. And a lot of them were pretty cool. They would find who did it and give it to the Raider and say, hey, this is what I found. Can we talk about it? That happened to me several times. And I was like, oh, man, you know, how did I miss that? You know, sometimes as Raiders, they rush. Okay, and when you rush, you're bound to maybe miss something. But, uh, you know, I can't say that any individual Raider will intentionally just go and miss stuff. Again, it happens. They're human, right? Now, when is it less likely to be found? You know, it, it hurts me to say this, but it's the veteran. I've seen veterans get rating decisions. They get 100% a permanent total. And then all of a sudden, they'll say, hey, Dwayne, I want you to review this or review something else. And I see this rating decision. I'm like, wait a minute. Did you know they made an error on your effective date? No. I got 100% of permanent total. I thought I was good. Nope. It's right here. That happened to me on my last claim. But I was able to identify it. They actually granted a particular increase that I was requesting. They only went back two months. And I got a retro, but they were supposed to go back two years. And someone said, hey, you better leave it alone. They're going to go back and open up everything. And I was like, nope, they're not going to go back and open up everything. That is a myth, okay? Sometimes Raiders do go back and look at stuff, but that's a small percentage of the time that that happens, okay? But I knew that I had evidence that showed that I should have been granted to increase two years prior. All right. So that's another reason why not you should only be educated, not only you should be educated on the VA claims process, but how that process impacts what you do, what you have done with your claim. All right. That's very important. A lot of people just get that retro pay if they get service connected and they think they're good. OK, but you definitely you want to check that effective date. Now, some things that you definitely want to look out for some examples of some errors is effective dates, um, incorrect percentage assigned, okay, incorrect um, rating for a particular condition. I've seen that where the veteran claimed an increase for PTSD and the rater went and denied tinnitus, okay. You don't see it a lot, but it does happen, okay. Remember, this is not a perfect system. People are rushing through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of claims, okay? So that's why when I educate my clients, I'm like, hey, you, when you're educated on the process, you're giving them things that will help them grant you service connection. Now, that doesn't mean it's a guarantee, all right? We've talked about that in my monthly Veterans Roundtable, the monthly Q&A session that I give every month. It is not uh, automatic, okay? Again, it has to go, the VA claims has to go through a process. Now, the bonus. The bonus is I'm going to discuss the first error that I received as a rating decision. Not only do I remember uh, what the error was, I remember the gentleman that did it. And, you know, it kind of hurt him more than it hurt me because he looked at me. You know, you spank your kids when they're young or whatever, you tap them on the butt, and you're like, well, that hurt me more than it. It's going to hurt you, you know, but he was really nice. And I did not a veteran claim for tinnitus because the examiner gave a negative med medical opinion. Right. So back then I was on what they call second signature. Someone from the quality department was assigned to review my rating decisions before they went out. All right. So I denied it. Man, it's easy claim is good. Right. So he looked at it, came back a couple days later, say, hey, you did this rating decision. I looked at it. I'm like, yep, that's me. Well, I got to call an error on it. You denied the benefit when you should have granted it. I looked at it. I was like, hey, but the doctor gave a negative opinion. He says, I know. But the veteran was diagnosed with, with tinnitus in service. And I was like, okay, but the doctor still said no. So he not only did he point out the 38 CFR and the M21 that states if the veteran is diagnosed or is there a note, of tinnitus in service, even though the examiner says no, 
we still have to grant the benefit. And I never forgot that throughout the remainder of my career. Now, I did a video on how you win your claim for tinnitus, and I'll link that video to the end of this video, okay? So you can understand the tinnitus and acoustic trauma. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to win your claim. But that was my first time, and like I said, I never forgot that particular 38 CFR M21 ever again. I never got an error for that particular, making that particular mistake. But I did get errors for other stuff, okay? Again, it happens. A lot of veterans think, hey, this is a perfect system. They shouldn't be making errors. It happens, okay? But the good thing about it, they can be identified, okay? So if you, the veteran, think that you have a CUE, make sure you educate yourself on what a CUE is, what a CUE, CUE is, and what regulation did that particular rater violate, okay? So with that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you.